let's get into the questions and uh, go from there. See, I told you Gary Gensler watches the show. Buenos dias, Gary. Stop protecting me. All right. You know, people get, give Gary Gensler a real hard time. And uh, I got to tell you, some of the things that he said has made sense, which is, hey, these centralized exchanges, maybe they shouldn't commingle funds. And uh, maybe they shouldn't use those funds to buy their family, I don't know, real estate in the Bahamas. Maybe we should have public audits. Maybe we should make sure they're not insolvent and screwing people over. I'm like, no, oh, it makes a lot of sense. But then he goes on the rails and he's like, hey, everything else is security besides Bitcoin. I'm like, well, see, there's, there's, two, there's two sides to every coin. And that's just how it is. Gary's not pure evil. He's just doing what he thinks is best and whatever his overlords at BlackRock tell him to do. I'm just kidding. Don't sue me. Yeah, regulation, little regulation, centralized exchange would be nice. Can't get any worse. You know, I know people will look at this today like, damn it, USDC uh, depegged and now everything's going to fall apart. Like I said, 12% of the total reserves are were in Silicon Valley Bank. It's not like it's not like 100% what, uh, you know, essentially what happened with, uh, you know, algorithmic stablecoin, which was Luna. So I don't think it's going to be awful and, and cataclysmic. And again, this is just that one part. Did Bitcoin get hacked? Was there a double spend? Did Vladimir Putin come out and say that he was the creator of Bitcoin? No. I think fundamentally nothing's really changed. It's just that the banking system, which I got to tell you is quite ironic that uh, Elizabeth Warren came out and was pretty much dancing on, on the grave of uh, Silvergate. You know, this is now a traditional bank that was approved by the banking sector. They're the ones that went down. So, you know, where are you at now, Warren? Ah, good morning. Golfer is here. Saturdays is a good time to do this. Right. Someone's making a ton of money. There's always, there's always somebody making a ton of money. And it doesn't matter where we're at. And remember this. Even in like, like when we talk about like in the 1970s, when the S&P 500, when it pretty much collapsed or late, late 60s, it took about 10 years to get back to its all-time high, 10, 12 years, somewhere around there. In that time, there was always little, little uh, bear rallies. And some of them were actually quite large. There's opportunities everywhere, just finding those opportunities. You know, some people say that gold's going to make a, a huge comeback. Hey, I got no problem with gold. I own some gold. Great. Jed, stable coin from Cardano. Yes. Hello, TND. <laughs> these banks are low with bonds, which makes them unrealized loss, extremely high right now. So the Fed would step in and buy these bonds. Yeah, probably so. But again, the Fed's also doing this experiment. It's called quantitative tightening. That's not the whole point. The point was to offload a lot of things off their balance sheet. So we'll see how this works out. Hey, OG. Mm, happy Saturday. He's got a point. He's not wrong, you know. And, you know, like it's, it's all about your, your start point. You know, people give gold a lot of, a lot of guff, and a lot of problems, especially in this channel. Mostly it's because that guy, I don't like to say his name, but he's just always talking about how great gold was. But if he got in 2000, gold's awesome, right? You're up big time. Right now you're up, you're up enough, but it's been pretty flat. So it's the same thing with Bitcoin, right? They can't understand because people got in in 2010. They're like, this thing is awesome. But if you got in 2021, it sucks because you're like, man, I'm underwater. So it's all star frames, but really what it comes down to, and Ben had a good point. He was talking about how he overlaid um, the stock market crash with what's going on right now. And he said, you know, if you go back to stock market crash with Amazon and all those different tech companies, they crashed by 95%. If those people just would have stuck around, uh, they'd be multi, multi millionaires, depending on how much they invested into, because they didn't, because people look at these crashes like this is awful. I am one of this is what I've always said. I've always said this. I was micro DCAing for quite some time. About two or three weeks ago, I started to DCA regular. And I said, I don't know if this is the bottom. I don't think it is. I'm hoping for it to go down more so I can buy cheaper. I think that's the bigger mentality that a lot of us have. The problem is, is that it's not about buying. It's about when do you sell? And that's the bigger question. 
uh, which will go over the next two years. Yeah, what a week. Interesting week. Klaus has got a good point. Time to bummer Bitcoin. Potentially for you. Hey, Becky, looking forward to our interview. Tests are a meme. Exactly, Rob. Bank runs are an advertisement for holding assets. Like, you know, it's a good point. I didn't say that. You know, like we always hear about the run of the banks in Venezuela and the run of the banks in Turkey. And as Americans or Canadians or wherever you're at, you're like, whatever. Yeah, that doesn't, it's not going to happen here. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's never going to happen here. And then here we are. Silicon Valley Bank, people, there's a run of the bank right now. So, Maybe this is the moment where people are like, ah, oh, maybe I should have gotten into that crypto because I can hold it. But that's just it. They don't understand that it's not just like you holding on a centralized exchange. It's like, well, I don't want to have the crypto and have it on FTX and I get screwed over. And this is why everybody has to help each other. Like it's your responsibility to teach the people around you about what it means for self custody. I did a piss poor job before and now I'm trying to get on it. So I need you to tell your friends and your family or whoever will listen, like, look, you can do the Silicon Valley Bank thing and hopefully FDIC insurance will come in at 250,000. If you got more than that, you're kind of screwed or whatever. And if you don't want to wait for your funds, because guess what? Uh, if those people right here, if they have to pay for their mortgage, they have to pay for their utilities, they have to pay for food, they're not getting it. I guarantee those debit cards are turned off too. So if this is the case, I think it's important that we also have to educate everybody around us and how vital it is, self-custody. And you can order cards right now, which will take money out of your, <sighs> actually, I'm not sure about that. About cold storage. Eh, you can still use it. But anyhow, it's up to you to teach people. If you don't want to teach them, just send them my website, danteachescrypto.com. It's 100% free. It's always free. You just go to how do I, or actually the safety one, and in their videos right there, they're like six to eight minutes long. Yeah. So selling may go away, come back around November. I think that's how it goes. It's actually sometime around uh, uh, Halloween. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's about the same time. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba. <laughs> question is i have 1 million bitcoin what platform would it be exchanged for if your uh, currency collapsed let me see shells again it's a good question and it's like uh like here's an example so like we have this sports facility in el paso and we just uh installed these uh their, their containers and they have bathrooms inside and uh, it's just for our the people who there play who play the sports. And uh, I was trying to get funds to my to uh, the plumber who was putting everything in. And I we use uh, see their first light. No, this one's first light. And uh, we were trying to use Zelle just to send them a couple thousand dollars to get things going. Couldn't do it. They're like, well, you have you have a cutoff a thousand bucks. I'm like, this is my money. What the hell's going on? So like I asked him, I go, hey man, you take Bitcoin? He's like, I take Bitcoin. All right. Well, there's all your funds. Was there like that? And he was good to go. So that worked out pretty well. Again, it's all about uh, where you see the value in it. Mm. Yeah. Stefan's got, don't worry, USDC will be back to you one by one. I tend to agree there. I don't see how it's going to keep depegging unless we keep, you know, making a run on the USDC bank. But, uh, I don't think it's going to be if swaps and uh, trades are stopped at Coinbase. I'm wondering if they're also stopped at like, say, a Binance or a Kraken or a Celsius. I'm not for sure. Celsius. Just kidding. Gemini. Tether is king. Well, so far. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Not even financial advisors can't really give good advice. That's true. How much is your net worth, Rob? Uh, enough to be comfortable. I will tell you, though, after a certain amount, uh, once you can pay all your bills, it's pretty much just gravy, honestly. I've known people that made, you know, hundreds of millions 
and uh, or tens of millions. And uh, there's really, I mean, you can change your lifestyle definitely, but as far as your happiness level goes, it doesn't really change too much as long as you can afford the essentials and get out of that. And maybe it's just, I just see the people that are the most happiest are the ones that are, that continue to build and, and have goals. That's really it. Mm. <laughs> Buy some bright orange chair. I don't know. Uh, so, Judah George says, could the Silver Valley Bank, Silicon Valley Bank downfall, but the final black swan event that regulars use as a justification claim that cryptos are damaging the traditional... Well, that's just it. This wasn't a crypto bank. This wasn't like Silvergate where they were, you know, funding a lot of the crypto operations. Silicon Valley Bank has been around for like almost 20 years, as I recall. And uh, it was there for a lot of the different uh, VC and different funds where people needed uh, loans and uh, to invest in the different uh, real business startups, not crypto. So with this one, this isn't like a crypto bank per se. The only thing that's, that's crypto is there is that USDC put their reserves into it, and this bank uh, put a lot of their funds into T-bills, and uh, then there was a run in the bank for whatever reason. I think it was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Elizabeth Warren did some kind of tweet show about how it was insolvent, but it's just hearsay. I'm not, I'm not for sure. Where's your Bitcoin, Rob? It's right here. It's right here, this ledger. Well, there's a couple of ledgers. That's just the one that's close to me. That's where it's at. Oof, 8K Bitcoin this year. I have a feeling it's going to go below 15, but I could be wrong. Everybody thinks that that's a little bit too crazy. But I don't know. Uh, it's down. It's de-pegged. There you go. Mm. And I think that's it. <laughs> I thought USD was safe. Nothing safe. That's why. That's why I like, like we think everything's safe until it's not, right? How many of us fell into the 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 Celsius narrative, or the Voyager narrative, or the FTX, the BlockFi narrative? How many of us fell into the uh, Lehman Brothers narrative? How, much, how many of us fell into the bank narrative? Well, thankfully, the government bailed everything out. But again, it comes down to, to the basics. I mean, I can't give you financial advice, but this is what I do. I just diversify. And that's it. Because, I mean, people who put 100% into Luna because they thought it was a safe bet, they're done now, you know. And people who thought that Celsius was the safest, 100%, in, put everything in. They're they're waiting for the conclusion, Voyager and BlockFi and all this stuff. I just, this is how I do it. So like, I mean, I have, I can't even say it anymore. It's just, that's just a good idea, I think. Zero cool one's the next meetup tomorrow morning, as a matter of fact. We're going to go walk the shelter dogs over at uh, Luisa, Amigos de los Animales. I always do a tweet and send it out. We start at 8 o'clock. We walk the dogs for about an hour. It's on the boardwalk right by the beach. Dogs get walked. Everybody's happy. I treat everybody to breakfast afterwards. That's it. So meet me there. Walking is great. Walking is what keeps me in shape. Where is it safe to store your stable coins or cash now? Uh, I mean, you put it on your ledger, but again, uh, and how to swap from USDC to cash. That's a problem because that you're going to need centralized exchanges, unfortunately. And uh, with that, you're going to need those guys to open up. Unfortunately, Coinbase just said, we're closed down for the weekend. Sorry, not going to do anything with that. And maybe by that time, Maybe that'll enough to alleviate, and we'll see. But again, 12% of the reserves of USDC was in Silicon Valley Bank. It's not all of it. 3.3 billion out of 40 billion. So I'm just saying, can't swap now. Please like and subscribe. Thank you, because I forget to say that. Gary is pure evil. I don't know if he's pure evil. I think that's that's a stretch.
hey man i'll be back in uh el paso uh april 1st so we'll, we'll get together What? Oh, you're retiring? Good for you. <laughs> hey, Dan, do you have an update on the Voyager debit card? You know, I still have that laying around somewhere. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work out for you. Me neither. Still got five figures on Voyager, six figures in Celsius. We'll see. Hey, new member. Thanks for becoming a member. Thank you. That'll be a... Two bucks in my, I can buy, well, who knows? I can buy more than two USDCs now. That's pretty good. I have 20 cents to uh, do whatever I want to, go crazy. I think DAI is decoupling too. Oh no. Rob, you're worried about your stock portfolio being held at a financial institution. If that institution fails, defaults. Broker dealers, uh, most it's all on Robinhood. So if Robinhood goes down, yeah, it's all gone. So yeah, I mean, this is the thing you got to think of yourself. Like, it's how how things are likely to occur, 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 occurs. You think that uh, the entire financial system? Let's just start with like like the basics, right? Do you think another bank will collapse? Okay. Well, do you think that's your bank? Okay. Well, how many more banks do you think are going to collapse? Okay. So after that, do you think that broker dealers, the whole financial system and the stock market will collapse? Okay. Well, do you think that after that will collapse? Do you think we'll be in Mad Max Thunderdome and you have to have a bug out bag and live off the land and, until the entire world just collapses? Okay. So it just depends on your risk level and where you think things are going. I personally think the Mad Max narrative is going to play out anytime soon, but who knows? So for me, uh, I'm just going to sit and wait and see where it is. It's not like I, and again, this is why, like, it's not going to crush me if uh, for some reason, I don't see how that would happen, but it could happen. Is they're just like, no, you can't uh, redeem anything. Sorry, I just collapsed. Hmm. Simon says, Rob, you can get your USDC off of Coinbase, watch Optical Art YouTube channel and tells you how to do it. Interesting, Let's see how that works out. You might be able to swap. Maybe you could be able to swap and then put it into your, your ledger. That might be it. Let's find out. Hold on. I'm looking on my phone, which I have a Coinbase. And let's see. Right. Yeah, it looks like you can swap. So there you go. Give that a shot. When FTX fell, I pulled my crypto to Ledger. That's pretty good. Hopefully there's no clawbacks for you if I don't have any friends. That's a sad situation. Well, we're all your friends here. Speaking of which, uh, we're going to go ahead with that. Tell Oof, I shouldn't have said that. I'll tell you later. If you are a member of Dan Teaches Crypto, the website, expect an email pretty soon because I know like everybody likes to, to interact here in the live chat. We're going to show you how to, because I don't do these live, these live streams that much anymore. We're going to go to another platform and uh, go from there. Ooh. The U.S. and Finance are Wild West. Where is the cheapest place to buy Bitcoin? You know where the cheapest place to buy Bitcoin was? FTX. And everybody told me what a moron I was for using these other platforms. I just didn't really like the FTX too much. I thought it was a sh crappy uh, interface. So in our actuality, the rate was like 0. Point something percent spreads weren't uh, were, were pretty reasonable but you know how much it actually turned out to be 100 percent. so uh she was placed to buy bitcoin for me i can't tell you the cheapest i don't really know but uh so far the things been working for me is i use coinbase i sign up for this thing called coinbase one which the trading fees are uh, eliminated up to ten thousand dollars 
and you can use that uh, every month and you have to pay it's 19.99 per month if you sign up for the year which is what i did or it's 29.99 per month if you go month to month and that's what i did and that's it Robbie, you buying this dip i buy every i buy every day so i don't have to think about buying the dip and again it's not about how much you buy it's not about how much you make it's about how much you keep the uh, the hardest part because we're all veterans. Let's be honest. If you're watching this stream, you've been here for quite some time. You've been buying dips. You've been in crypto. You pretty much believe in it. This is not the hard part. There's two hard parts. One is just sticking around when it's boring and nothing really happens. And the second part is getting to the promised land of when you can sell and pulling the trigger. That's why I'm going to be focusing more on that over the next one to two years of when to sell. Because everybody will tell you to buy the dip and buy the dip and buy the dip until you're all dipped out. The question is, when do I sell? Actually, if you look in, uh, there's a, a link, which there's always a link. There's a link in the description. And it says, why and when I'm selling 80% of my crypto. And there's a YouTube video. Watch that YouTube video. And that pretty much lays it out. And uh, a big chunk of that is uh, me using Ben's website. And I urge you to do the same thing. And again, I urge you to, to not just that, but just take a look. Like all those things that you hear about in the, in the, in the macro levels, like, well, you know, the housing markets, uh, it's really doing well. It's really, you know, fantastic or it's really doing bad. It's what You can take a look at that and just go, well, let me see if that's true. Well, that's not going to be it. There you go. So let's see. Uh New houses for sale sold ratio. We'll tell you right here. Latest is 7.9. What that means is, let me do this. For every house that's been, it's not doing too bad actually. For every house that's, that's sold, uh, you got eight more ready to sell. Or excuse me. So for every eight houses sold, you got one for sale. Oh, I still made this up. Uh, okay. For each new house sold, okay. For each new household, there's eight new ones for sale. Sorry, got that a little confused. And then you can take a look at uh, home value index, sales prices of houses sold, which way it's going. And you can see it's still going up pretty well. So again, like when I talk about like these things, this it's all here for you to find out. And that's why I use that one. Yeah, meme says it right. Bank of America is too big to fail. <laughs> ah. Oh, the Shaolin. Things are beginning to crack with the traditional banking system. I'm sure the Fed would have been happy to see Silvergate go down, but now Silicon Valley. Low pressure. I'm pretty sure that uh, the government in general, uh, especially Democrats, for some reason, and don't, don't spam me with like, oh, you hate Democrats? Look, I vote for the best person. We'll just say that. But I got to tell you, most Democrats do not like, most of them do not like crypto. Do not like things that are going in this direction. So I will just say that uh, they would be much happier if uh, a lot of crypto would just go down, or if more things would go down. If we had more FTXs, then they could say, "See, see, told you. We got to get at. We got to get after him." Elizabeth Warren's leading the pack. Uh, hey, Rob, what will you do with your cash? It's a great question. Uh, me and my wife talk about this all the time. Matter of fact, what do we do? What do we do? Let me show you. There's, this is why, it, okay. So look at this. This is housing unit started, meaning how many new houses are being built. And you can just see that we topped out. Let me just pull this up a little better. Well, we topped out over here, matter of fact, 2006, right before the great crash, the great recession. We were, this is an, yeah, this is 2 million. Housing unit started, it was 2.27K in thousands. You're looking at 2 million that were started back in January, 2006. And you can see what happened here. They just started to, to crash. And guess what? Around here, people weren't starting new houses up because guess what? They're, the prices were so cheap 
because we just went through this, this great recession. Now you see the same thing kind of happening over here. Will it keep going down? Not for sure. But if you have a lot of houses just dropping off, like, okay, it went from 1.8 to 1.3. And let's see the sale price. Oh, sale price is still up, up high. The sale prices are still high, which makes no sense because your sale prices are high. Oh, this only goes to October. That's why. Oh, the data's not out. When the sale prices are high, that means that people still have to pay the same price, even though the rates are going up. They can't afford that. So eventually it's just going to keep, it's going to start to go down. So what I'm going to do with our, our money is do nothing. All I got to do is do nothing. And the same thing that we see over here where, where it came out, just dropped right down. I still am under the assumption that in Q3 and Q4, it's going to be very turbulent and we're going to have a lot of problems. If we can get it through Q3 or Q4 of 2023, I think we'll be in a better place, but we have to see where it happens there, which is what everybody's kind of pointing to anyhow. So I'm just waiting for things to go down, which I think they will. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm doing two things. First, I'm dollar cost averaging crypto. And the second thing I'm doing is waiting for the housing market to really go down and collapse. I could be wrong, but if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, whatever. Let's see. Well, let me see here. Uh, USDC taking a haircut. Contagion continues. Yeah, but it's not like a, an FTX type of thing, but it is interesting. So this all kind of comes in together, comes in play. And I think the bigger, the bigger question is this. This is the bigger question. If we start to collapse for these traditional finance players, these banks go down. I mean, USDC is just one, one aspect of that. You would think that you would see a different problem in turbulation, turbulation in the uh, stock market. The question I have is, let's take a look, is how is crypto doing? Because to me, like I think about this, like this would be like a more bullish sentiment for, for crypto to go, look, if you don't like banks, this is... This is what it is. And Bitcoin's only gone up. Bitcoin's down 10% for the week. Of course, that's probably because of Silvergate. But it's the last 24 hours, 0 0.8. They're in 1.8. But everything else is down. Well, USD coin's down. <laughs> Lido. Shoot, everything's down the last 24 hours. Except for Monero, which is a really good project. I, might, I don't talk about it as much as I should. Quant, Kronos, a lot of things are just down. What are they doing? I wonder if they're, nah, they're not flowing into Bitcoin because here's the dominance, 40.4, the same thing has been uh, every time. Interesting. All right, how far? All right, five more minutes, I think. <laughs> Did you see that? So Jim Cramer, this was on uh, it was on Fox News. They they called out Jim Cramer because just like a couple months ago, or maybe it was a month ago, he was talking about what what a great buy it would be of of uh, of Silicon Valley Bank. He said, "Ah, it'll turn right around. You you watch, it's be great." That's gotta suck. But yeah, Jim Cramer, follow inverse Jim Cramer. Seemed like that's uh, more of a safer bet. How healthy are alts going into spring? Good question. What if we? Let's see. Alts going in. Probably not the greatest. Remember, everything follows Bitcoin. So let's see. Risk. That's macro. Let's go to crypto. Let's take a look at the altcoin market cap risk levels. And the bluer it is, the more it's a, uh, for me, it, it's more of a buy sell. Some people might say, I'm just going to stay away, but that's fine. Remember, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is a pretty good time frame. And 18th of June was a pretty good, pretty good. But then, of course, we bought it out in November, right? September, October. 
Yeah, then I bottomed out 0 0.2. Right now, 0 0.3. And if you take a look at time and risk bands for, yeah, kind of in the middle. Me personally, again, I can't call it. So I just say, well, what is Delica? However, when things are to go that 0 0.1, I sort of what's called dynamic DCA. So let's just say I spend 100 bucks on Bitcoin every day, right? As the uh, wristbands start to, uh, the numbers go from like 0 0.3 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. I'm like, wow, this is looking like a pretty good opportunity. Relative strength index looks like it's super overbought. Then instead of spending 100, I might spend 120 or maybe 150. Just depends. Go from there. Oh, yeah. I've got that. D214. Out of the army you go. Short timer. Get the sham. Nothing is safe. No, no, you're right. Nothing is safe. That's why there's so much risk. Mm, okay. Coquino says, do you will you stay in Puerto Rico for good? Yes. Or do you prefer life in the US? I don't know if I prefer, but I gotta tell you, like there's a reason why we go back to Texas. And I think people in, in Puerto Rico can attest to this. It, that you, if you live in the United States, at some point you get a little island fever. That's I've heard this from everybody who lives. I mean, people who are from the states, and also from people in Hawaii. They're like, "Look, there's only so much time I can spend on, the, on an island. It's like tropical paradise. I got to get away." And because I lived in Vegas for two years, the same thing. Like when you go and live in Vegas, you're like, "Oh, the Strip again, boring." But then when you go there, and you're like, "This is awesome." So yeah, we go we go back to Texas in April. But I'll be here for the long haul. Oh, yeah. Who remembers Anchor Protocol? Yeah, 20% APY. <laughs> Send Zeus. Zeus is the big dog. You can swap to USDT for a loss. Interesting. If you want to. That's an option. Again, if you think it's going to keep falling down, I can't tell you what to do. Me personally, I'm just like, ugh. I'm not going to concern myself right now. It could all go to zero, and I lose roughly 1%. Well, okay. I just don't see it doing that. But again, I've been wrong many times. What? You never answer my questions. What's your question? Rob, you take problems in Bitcoin. Look at, there's a couple of videos. Just look at digital asset news profits. And uh, the last profit taking we did when, was in Bitcoin. It'll be there. But you have to understand, even though you're taking profits in Bitcoin, you're still dollar cost averaging. I know it doesn't make much sense right now. Just watch the video. I don't want to explain it here. Yeah. And what are we going to do? You know, and freak out. That's the thing. Like, you know, you'll, you'll watch some YouTube channels and those YouTube channels will give you anxiety and angst because they're just like, got the mouth open and the clickbait title and it's just awful and the world's going to collapse, which is great for clicks, I must admit. But I don't really, I mean, I like people to watch the, the channel, but I'd rather have people just calm down because it's not the end of the world. It just isn't. Are you healthy? Are everything's okay with your family? Are you above ground? I think you're going to be okay in the long haul. So, yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot worse things to happen. That's for sure. Mm, whale swaps. Okay. Ah, well, it says I'm from Singapore. Swap all the USDs to ETH and transfer to Ledger. Not bad. Mm. Ah, that's right. Coinbase is down for maintenance. They've been posting about it. I thought that was the fourth, but I guess uh, there you go. Maintenance. But that's true. They have been posting about that for quite some time. I don't think they could call that. Mm. <laughs> 100K Bitcoin coming soon is about a year or three. Uh, with the thoughts on Exodus, the great company. Is that the wallet company? I don't use them. So again, on this channel, I'm kind of biased. So if I don't know it, I don't really talk about it. I'm sure there's not to say it's not a great project or it's got a great product. It's just, I don't really know about it. I like the FTX UI. That makes one of us. You know, the great, the best UI was Voyager. That was great. I really was bummed out about that. I got to use Coinbase and that. Their UI is okay. Just not as easy as before.
What? Pi cycle top and RSI divergence, the weekly is only the time to sell. In the long run, if you want to take a look at pi cycle top here, I don't think we're even close. If we take a look at the pi, the pi cycle top, just looking at Bitcoin, there's been a four times looking retro retrospectively, right? And pi cycle top, I think it was created in 2018, 2019. I, I want to say 2018. But they look back and they pretty much nailed the top on 2017 and the 213s. But what's crazy is that they pretty much hit the top two over here when Bitcoin price is like 59K, which is pretty good. Like if you would have sold, if I'd have been smart and sold more here, that'd have been great. Now it went up to I think 69K over here, but I'm never going to hit the absolute top tippy top, right? If I get within 80% of the top, I'm happy. If I get within 80% of the bottom, I'm also happy. So Pi Cycle Top is when it was 111 day with a 200 moving average. I always forget. No, 350 day moving average times two. It's right here. 111, 111 day moving average divided by the 350 day moving average times two will get you the time frames. And what's great about, I like this, because with bends, you can do Pi Cycle Top with Bitcoin, also Ethereum, which again is, ooh, Cardano. Yeah, so on and so forth. So again, not going to get you the tops every time, but 80%, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, yeah, this is right. Buying low is easy. Selling high is hard. How many, how many videos have you seen about selling? How many times, how many videos have you seen about buying? Just think about that. And then you've got to think to yourself, do these people just want me to buy so I can be exit liquidity? That's what you really have to say. Ask yourself that question. Hmm. Not something you hear too often on YouTube, that's for sure. I just like all parties equal. Yes, me too. You can't trust a politician. They are liars, right? Mm. <laughs> now, this is a good comment. Why are the USDC pigs different right now between the different exchanges? I don't know, but I got to tell you one thing. That's an opportunity. That's all I'll say. I'm not going to get into it. Nabil says, do you think the 50 basis points is unlikely now? I think this is because of the unemployment rate actually went up. No, I don't think it's unlikely. I still think that with CPI numbers, I mean, Jerome can do the 25 basis points and have more of a soft landing, but he saw what happened before. Maybe he should just say, okay, I'm just going to put my foot on the gas, put my neck on or put my foot on the neck of inflation. Keep going. I don't know, but it's very simple. So here's the thing, like I can tell you what I think, but it doesn't matter what I think because I don't know. The way I would play it like is like this. Let me say that again. The way that I'm going to play it is like this. The day that inflation CPI numbers come out, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm just going to wait. And if those numbers come out and we're right online, you know, they say, you know, uh, or Jerome comes out and says, okay, we're only going to raise it by 25 basis points. Well, great. You know what's going to happen with the market? probably go up. So immediately as he says that, I will probably buy, wait for things to go up. Maybe I'll take some profits. Now then, opposite happens. Jerome Powell comes out and goes, you know what? 50 basis points. You know, even though people talk about it, it's priced in, brother. You know the market is, is irrational. It'll sell off. So you just wait three or four hours, wait for it to go down, and then buy at that point. That's what I'm going to do. And you can do whatever you can like. I don't care what Rob does. I'm just going to buy and whatever Jerome says, whatever he says. I'm not going to buy anything. But for me, I just think like it's an easy play because even though people say it's priced in, it's priced in. How many times have we heard it's priced in and it's not? So. Yeah. Trump had NFT doesn't matter. You know what? We just met with the NFT group yesterday. Uh, we're doing this project called Flappy Bird. We bought the IP rights and we were talking. We're talking to a bunch of different chains and Matic was one of them. I got to tell you, those guys are super impressive. 
And there's going to be some, um, some announcements after, what is it called? DCG, the digital gamers, something or other. They got a lot of things lined up. I'll just say that it looks pretty good. And they've got a lot of people who want to work with them. What is this? <laughs> Sergeant Pepper says, are you not afraid of being robbed with your ledger laying on your desk and people knowing where you live? First of all, I don't know if people know where I live. And second of all, if they come in here and rob me at gunpoint for, for my ledger, well, that's only one of them. And I got five other ones, other places. No, excuse me, three other ones, other places. So if that happens, it happens. And like, first of all, they got to know what the hell a ledger is. First of all, they got to know, <laughs> they got to know a lot of things. I just don't see it happening. But you can try to come in here and rob me. I am from Texas, so good luck. Kramer's like the CEO of SVB who sold millions of stock. He probably says buy a wall selling. Could be a good point. Jim should be arrested. Rob, what percentage of your portfolio is crypto? I don't know. It fluctuates. It keeps growing and growing and growing uh, because every day I buy some more. So that's a solid amount. So like for you got to remember for, where'd it go? For this, this wheel right here, I don't like to say exactly how much it is, but this is on top of my crypto. So like this right here, that's 15%. This is just what I stake. So just so you know, but it's quite sizable, sizable, but it's not everything. And that's the big thing. So, and again, whatever, it, it's irrelevant what mine is. It's all really what yours is and what you think is best for you. Some people, as they're younger, they're like, I'm putting it all in there. And some people are older, like I put 2%. It doesn't matter. Mm. <laughs> my DD240 is always brown. My DD240 is, is digitalized. It's on my computer. That's also true. Yes, meme is right. Puerto Rico is part of the United States. We'll say mainland, the mainland states. Is Puerto Rico like El Paso? Not in the slightest. Yeah, only take profits on coins you hold over a year, tax list, short-term versus long-term, very true. What? Rob, your view on recent algo and HBAR hack. First of all, is that true? Algo rand hack. And the question then would be, is it a hack on Algorand? Or is it on in the ecosystem of Algorand? Ooh, let's take a look at here. A truly difficult time, Algorand Foundation releases hack statement. Algorand Foundation responded to a slew of hacks on its ecosystem, following criticism from Zach XBT. That's a guy to watch, Zach XBT. Ah, 9.2 million. Oh, we strongly advise all users to withdraw any funds from mnemonic wallets that were stored in my algo. What's my algo? My algo. This is a wallet. Ugh. Whatever. Okay. So it looks like an ecosystem thing. If I'm looking this right. So interesting. Yeah, again, there's a big difference between like the ecosystem. And the same thing was like Solana. When they had that wormhole attack, people say, well, it's Solana. Well, it wasn't really Solana, it was the ecosystem. Same thing with Cardano when they had Sunday swap. They say, see, there's a, you know, it doesn't work. Now, Cardano doesn't work. Well, no, it doesn't, wasn't really that it didn't work. Uh, there was a problem with uh, concurrency, and that was an issue with Sunday swap. So we have to be careful what we say. H having said that, and I, this is it, because I, I got to get out of here. It's been so long. You know how we've always said, don't spread FUD, don't spread FUD, you shouldn't spread FUD? I got to tell you, moving forward, that's all. I'm going to be talking about FUD mostly. 
it's the responsibility of the people who I'm talking about. If there's some, it's, if it's a credible source, obviously if I'm getting a, I heard from a guy from a guy who said Tether's going to, you know, explode. That's not what I'm talking about. But if there's some a reliable source and the FUD is out there, I think it's our duty to bring those things forward because if we would have done that, well, maybe people wouldn't have been attacked so much with Celsius or FTX or BlockFi or whatever else. So it's their job now to undo the FUD if that's what it is and let the strongest survive. And that's it. So look, everybody, we've gone an hour. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Like today's video, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, do a like, all that good stuff. Apparently YouTube seems to love that. But that's it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you and uh, have a good rest of your Saturday. Adios.